Yeah, hello everyone. Welcome to the session. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Thanks. Yeah, so I've already started the recording. Let me share the uh, live streaming uh, URL so that you can watch it uh, later. Sir, any scope for extending the deadline? Uh, not that I know of. <laughs> Right. So, I mean, these are the things that are not individually decided. So I'm not really sure of uh, that. And uh, uh, I mean, at this point, can't tell you that it will be extended. Hello, sir. I have a doubt with respect to project assignment three. Can I ask? Mm, project uh, lab assignment, is it? Yeah, lab assignment three. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, well, in last uh, last meeting, I have asked that I mean uh, I need to do some uh, uh, remove spaces and work it out. Uh, I mean the JSON said there is some spaces are there. Do I asked whether I need to remove the spaces and all. Mm -hmm. So I have worked it out. Uh, uh, and I mean uh, before space, I, if the spaces are available in the JSON uh, entries, the testers are passing hundred out of hundred. Uh, if I work it out and if I solve it, it is only passing 25 out of 100. Okay. So, I mean, uh, probably it's because the way you are doing it might be wrong, right? So, uh, if you are removing the space before by some hard coding or adding or removing an actual no, space. Yeah, actually, there's simply an improvement. Uh, previously, I've been using. Uh, import csv and using csv function uh, currently i have uh, i have created my own way to i mean my own way to uh, generate that uh, uh, dictionary without using csv uh, okay csv function I mean, in csv library mm -hmm. okay and in my local system also i mean uh, when i run it locally it was uh, i mean the old one and the new one both are working in the same but when hmm. I submitted, it, it was not working. Well. No, that's okay. I mean, see, uh, when we say it's working in my system and it's uh, not working in the portal, the thing is there might be something that is missing from the question statement. See, the idea is we know that uh, certain things can be achieved from uh, from multiple ways, right? But the question statement uh, emphasizes you on doing certain things in certain way, right? So that is the reason. Uh, it's not that you are getting something in your system and it's not happening in portal. There must be something uh, wrong with the portal or the way you are submitting. It's not that. The only thing is we are emphasizing on one particular way. We understand that that may not be the best way of uh, evaluating something, but uh, that is what we have, right? Because uh, uh, we have to look at uh, uh, thousand plus submissions and we cannot have uh, subjectivity in that, right? So that is the reason the problem statements that we give are very uh, strict in that case okay so i would suggest you to uh, just uh, share your file to me uh, through mail and i'll see uh, what exactly is getting wrong that's true, sir. Sir, okay. i mean i have replied the, to sorry yeah can you please, in chat ready can you please ping it because i will always uh, see it in youtube first time i have joined uh, the live session i mean the last okay. so okay, i did fine. not have your id i will share both the files both the zip files to you yeah uh, so I've been uh, able to reply to some of the students, not not everyone. So I'll try to do that um, uh, based on your submission. What can be wrong? I'll at least uh, let you know that. Yes, sure, sir. Sir, uh, can you just help me uh, find the max value? Means from the list I get it, but from the dictionary list of dictionaries, how do I pull out the max value in Jinja too? So, I mean, uh, there must be some way that you are segregating out uh, values, right? I mean, for example, if we give a uh, student ID as 101, we want uh, that particular uh, marks of that particular student, right? So in, there must be some, there must be a logic that you are segregating out based on what we are putting in as input, right? So there you- project that was taught in the live uh, lecture. And uh, uh -huh. but the, uh, I don't know what to write in double, bracket curly brackets like i'm using the function uh, max and no so the thing is uh, that's what right yeah, i mean if there is something complex thing that we want you to manipulate doesn't have to be done through jinja there is no strict rule on that you can manipulate it through python and pass on the value directly 
so that you don't use any for or if loop. Uh, just I mean, so to complicate the template, you can just pass on the actually calculated or evaluated value through uh, the the template, and then use it, render it directly. Right, you can do it. Saktivel, can you please uh, mute? Them? Sorry. Yeah. So you can do that. I mean, uh, it's not that we are asking you to do all the manipulations through template uh, or Jinja. You can do it in Python. So you, uh, uh, let's say you're using CSV or anything, you might be having dictionary, uh, list of dictionary or list of list, right? So you can yes. just go, yeah, you can just segregate out that those values in a different container and then take the max out. Okay, so that uh, is something that you can do. So, uh, I mean, uh, one way of doing that would be, you, let's say if I put... Uh, uh, also, sir, there was a problem that in the data file that was given to us, hmm. uh, when we tried to convert it into CSV, there were spaces. Hmm. Yeah. And when I wrote the code, uh, it threw an error. And that uh, that is very tough to decipher the Jinja error code. It's, I think we can understand and correct it. But hmm. problem was that uh, this Jinja template was throwing an error. Yeah, so that's what, right? So maybe what you're trying to do is do the manipulations also in Jinja. See, that is one way of doing it, but here mm -hmm. we are not very fluent with it. So let's not do that. Okay, okay. let's use Jinja for uh, simply rendering the values. Okay, values can come as many as you want can come from the, the controller. Controller meaning the, the render part, right? The mm -hmm. arguments of render. Sir, I had also same sort of issue like, it is quite hard to like we understand syntax of Jinja. Instead, mm -hmm. like I have to compute max, so I could do in Python, and then I could after the I could uh, add the placeholder in Jinja, mm -hmm. which is much easier. Yeah, so, so that you can do right. Nothing is stopping you from that. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Uh, I mean, uh, even in the projects, bigger projects, mm -hmm. uh, having placeholder and little bit of Jinja where is important. Like it's not super important to know all the syntax and stuff. Yeah, yeah, right. See, so the thing is. Um, we use for and if loop. Uh, so if you have seen what I have been doing, uh, what I was doing is if there is a, a table that has to be formed, yes. okay, where the numbers of entries or rows is not defined. So that is the case where I will have to use for loop within the template. Yes, okay, sir. I'm not doing for loop or applying any conditions within if to do manu uh, mathematical calculations. Yes, sir. Okay, so we'll bear, I mean, we'll, we'll have the use of Jinja bare minimum and we'll keep it to uh, as far as rendering values are concerned. Okay, not manipulations and all. Yeah. Even you can extend it uh, to all the other projects, uh, I mean, the lab assignments also and then the project also. Okay, the project is uh, uh, one step uh, forward in that way because there is no, uh, you know, auto grader or evaluator. So, I mean, the, the, the code or the logic that you are using is completely yours and will be just on what you have done. Okay. Here we are emphasizing you to do that because the question statement is same and we want answers in a particular fixed way. Project, you have that uh, uh, freedom. Thank you, sir. Hello, sir. Yeah. So, yeah, just give me a so, minute. Uh, yes, Swati. Go ahead. Sir, I'm running Flask in VS Code. I'm Missing issue there. Uh, when I write, uh, when I type Flask run, it says could not locate a Flask application. Hmm. Okay. So generally, what happens is uh, uh, Flask run is generally used when you want to run application through command line. Okay. Rather, you can use app dot run call within the module and just run the module. Okay. I'll show you what I was talking about. Run call. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, in today's session, we will be, you know, creating a small web app. So I'll let you know what I'm talking about. Okay. That is an alternative way. The documentation talks about uh, using flask run. Okay. Where you have to name the file as app and then proceed. So there is some issues with that. Even I don't myself use that way. What I use is do run call within the module and run the module in the, uh, in the uh, shell. So that is what I've been doing and that is uh, probably you should uh, follow. 
So you will show how yes. to run Flask in VS Code. Yes, yes. I'll show. I'll, today's exercise I'll not be doing on Replit. I'll be doing it on VS Code. And uh, I'm also. I just also want to know how to do it in Replit because yeah, project is project should be made in Replit. No, that is not an absolute necessity. You can oh. make your project in VS Code also. But it should be standalone or Replit. See the standalone meaning. Um, uh, what I what we mean by standalone is that uh, if you are doing it locally, you should not require anything else other than internet connection to show your application. Okay. okay. Uh, for example, uh, for example, if a student uh, wishes to use a database that requires its own server and all, what will happen to connect to the database? We want that server to run. Now there is this dependency. Uh, uh, where our application is running locally, but then the database is somewhere in different machine. So that is the dependency and that is uh, not something uh, standalone. Okay. okay. If you are creating your application in VS Code, everything remains within VS Code. Okay. So that is what we emphasize on. We gave a replit as an example so that it becomes easier for you to keep all the files in one place and show us. So there is no excuse of... Uh, you know, telling us at the time of exam that, sir, I had this file in a different system. What should I do? So those things are to be avoided. So that is the reason we emphasize on Replit. Otherwise, there is no necessity. If you are uh, uh, comfortable with working on VS Code, you have to, you can create your project in VS Code and show it locally. And, to, and for using Jinja 2 in VS Code, we don't need to install anything, right? We need to install Jinja. We need uh, to install, but uh, while installing task, it come by default, I think. Then it is okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So I mean, if you want to specifically use Jinja, right, with the with the one that we have been doing in till week three, so there we have to install Jinja because Flask was not in picture there. Now that so, we are running with working with Flask, Flask uh, by itself has its wrapper on Jinja. So the render okay. template that we'll be using today is nothing but the render function in Jinja. So quick question here. When I was trying to import uh, Jinja 2 in uh, VS Code, it was throwing some error. So can you help uh, with that? Right. So I relied on Replit to complete lab 3 assignment. So if we have to do things on VS Code, then I might need some help for installing Jinja 2 and Flask. Yeah, so um, that we can do, right? So if you want to work with uh, Jinja or Flask, so if you want to work with Flask and use Jinja within, just installing Flask will be sufficient, okay? But if you want to work with uh, only Jinja, such as uh, in week three lab assignment, then you have to explicitly install it. Okay, I'll uh, probably show you how to do that. It's just one command, uh, pip install Jinja, pip install Flask, that's all. So you have uh, installed uh, Jinja by in your system and it's still not working? Is that no, case? I have not installed it, Jinja. I oh. tried, it wasn't working, so I left it because I got the assignment 3 done on Replate. Uh -huh. uh, See, okay. the thing is what happens is what the Replate, what it takes care of that. Okay, So if you are using any, any library or package in Replate, you hit on the run button. First, what it does is it installs all the... Uh, I saw that. Uh, I saw that. Right. So we don't need to worry about that. But uh, in VS Code, uh, that doesn't happen. So we have to explicitly install. Hi, in VS Code, I have done same uh, pip install Flask. But uh, then also it's showing that they could not locate Flask application. No, so you install Flask and then you're using Flask run, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. so uh, that's what I'm saying. There is some issue with that command. I'm not really okay. sure of. Uh, we'll have an alternative to that. Pip is not getting uh, Pip is not being recognized by uh, VS console uh, VS Code console. So I didn't research. I was concentrating on completing assignment uh, lab three. So okay. So and, it is. Do you have a Pip uh, package manager installed? No, I don't think so. Uh, it's Windows, right? Do we need to have something? Uh, is there a Windows equivalent of Pip? So actually, Pip is a. Uh, uh, Python package manager, which you have to install. Okay. So just the way you have installed Python, you have to install pip also. So that has to be, so there is no command uh, for installing pip uh, like that. What we need to do is, uh, uh, I mean, you have to go to just Google and install, write something like install pip and all. So it is a package manager that has to be downloaded and then you can use it. 
okay uh so, i'll, I'll uh, briefly show you oh uh, and one more question on lab 3 uh, can we use base you in the last lab you showed right uh, you you created a file called base.html and then you read from the file and then you rendered it in the output.html so in the lab 3 can we use uh, the idea similar to base.html uh there is no issue with that i mean uh, i guess uh, i have replied to your mail for that oh okay uh, i haven't seen that yet so. yeah so uh, the thing okay. is uh, if if it is still passing all the test cases mean, meaning that there is no issue with that so okay should work but sir in the question they are saying that you should have only one file app.py yeah that is there but it does not uh, uh, i mean uh, it's not that it won't consider any other file you can have other files see what will happen is uh, when you have any extra file along with that that file will be simply neglected it's that it's not that you having uh, more than one file so uh, there will be any issue okay and here what is happening uh, the if we are using those templates ultimately what is happening we are opening a file writing something in it and then writing on uh, and then closing it right so here if we have a template that is already existing in the in the working directory then what will happen our system will use that template and then uh, render the file and then ultimately create the file so i don't think there is any issue with that what i was uh, doing uh, while doing let assignment it is not still completed i was uh, writing some uh, writing that uh, boilerplate of stm in a string in a python file Uh, yeah. Like uh, we do do in file handling, uh, I was uh, going through like this, and there was some error, like uh, string error. Uh, let me read out the error. There was this error, uh, unterminated string literal. So can I uh, not write uh, boilerplate in a string in Python? No. So I mean, uh, are you using multi-line string? How do you mm, enclose no. the complete template? With double I'm just quotes. using a normal. No, that won't work, right? Double so, quotes, guys. Yeah, so you use three double quotes in the starting of the complete template and three double quotes at the end. It will then work as a complete string. I did this also. It is still not working. It's not still not working. You do that no, for all the templates. So. Okay, so one more doubt. Uh, if we just can like um, create base dot html or index dot html like you did, so it would be uh, more easier. So if we can do, I'll go like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I mean, uh, I guess the submission that uh, Siva has done is uh, based on the same thing, right? So you can go ahead with that. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, have an external file called base dot html or whatever it is. uh and then uh, use it in your file so that should not be an issue okay okay thank you okay yeah uh, mahati good evening sir yeah hi tell me uh sir uh, this is regarding the lab 3 assignment hmm. uh in that one i have an issue with the plotting that uh, histogram okay so uh, i'm doing it in the replet uh, so whenever i try to import that matplotlib uh, dot pyplot uh, mm -hmm. so it is uh, giving me uh, um, some lines under that one so maybe uh, but i checked everything um, i don't know it is not recognizing no so what exactly is the issue are you using plt dot show yes sir see plt dot show uh, should not be used Okay. See, the thing is, what happens is, uh, Matplotlib is an individual library which yeah. plots graphs for okay. you in a different tab. Yeah. Okay. Now okay. here, what we are trying to do is not uh, display those graphs in a tab. Just save the image <laughs> and then <laughs> render it on HTML. Okay. So there is some backend uh, issue with this when we use plt dot show. Okay. so okay. that you have to take into consideration just give me a minute i have uh, answered to this thread previously 
Okay. I'm just looking for it in discourse. Yeah. So there is uh, one configuration that needs to be done. That is uh, with some backend, matplotlib dot backend. Uh, that has to be added. I'll just share the. And I, uh, I mean, if uh, this has been uh, addressed in discourse also, you can just have a look at it. I'm not able to find the thread. So, yeah. Wait. not able to find the the thread but it is there in uh, discourse it is very recent okay let me give you a minute Yeah, so I got it. Just give me a minute. I'll share this to you. So this has been again a forwarded uh, uh, link which we have dealt with. So this was the issue that uh, students have already faced, and. Uh, okay. Right. So you can just go through it, follow the code, and then it should work. Don't use plt.show. OK, sir. I'll try. Thank you, sir. OK. Uh, yes, Kavita? Uh, good evening, sir. Actually, in screencast, I have uh, seen that sir is explaining to create the environment uh, to install Jinja and uh, uh, the other things also, right? So uh, my question is, what is the difference between doing that and directly installing it on the command line? Uh, what do you have to install? Uh, Jinja. Uh -huh. uh, and other packages also. He creates environment, right? Uh, uh -huh. That dot env folder is created. Right. And then, uh, then he installs and then he does it uh, only for an environment. Mm -hmm. If I do it directly on command line once and for all, won't mm -hmm. it work? It will still work. No issues with that. Because okay, so I have where are you machine. actually working uh, with it in local machine or replit? A local machine. Okay, Sh should not. Is it be because any. of the path thing is doing? Because uh, I am creating say, say separate folders for the lab assignment, and I am inside those folders. So is it because of that it is not able to recognize the earlier installed version? No, no, it's not that it won't do. Uh, I mean, it will anyway recognize if you install it in the system. Not an issue. Are you facing issues with that? Yeah, that's why I have to again do it for the environment and then it worked for me. The thing is uh, when you create a virtual environment and install packages within it, the packages uh -huh. remain confined to the environment. Yeah, that I, I understand that. But I had done that uh, at the command prompt itself long back. Hmm. And it worked uh, for the first or second assignment for me. Okay. But then it didn't work. So I had to create uh, for the a particular environment and do it. And I thought that it's because of the path issue it's happening. Yeah, so that might be one of the issues, right? I mean, uh, what you have to do is uh, add the path that you're working on in the uh, environment variables. Okay, so right, you don't want right. to... I'll try doing that. Yeah. yeah. But in, even if I do it for the environment again, uh, there is no issue, right? They, they, it, it, even if I install it again for the environment, Hmm. It will not clash with the existing thing. No? no, no, no. That is the whole purpose of having a virtual environment, right? Okay. Okay. So what happens is the if if for example you have one version of Flask in your system and you create mm -hmm. virtual environment and install Flask one more time, 
the latest version of flash will be installed and will remain confined to that environment only it will okay. not uh, interact with each other okay okay thank you sir uh yeah. yes so abiral sir i have posted my question in the chat huh. okay i'll read through it okay so the issue is uh you're trying to implement the fills condition with flask and post and get okay but every time you refresh the page it sends a post request but i thought it's only possible to through submit button it recreates issue whenever i try to refresh it sends the post request while uh, the input is null at start and it yeah so actually that uh, generally happens when you have already posted so it might have asked you to confirm resubmission right something like that so when you go back uh, and re reload the page what happens is the request remains same and that is get sent so that is not an issue that exactly is not an issue and uh, i mean just reload uh, so what happens is just go to the url tab on the top and write the url once again and just hit it i mean uh, mm -hmm. that is the url gets updated oh, okay sir that's why like i uh, i clicked on enter on the url so it works yeah so that's what so i mean when you are clicking on uh, url tab the url gets updated although the url remains same as we you know uh, coded it but then it gets updated and a new request is sent which is by itself done by get okay sir yeah so generally this happens when uh, so what happens is when you post certain data in the form using form that data is saved not only uh, uh, in the in the payload but also gets saved in the session okay so uh, even if you delete the data or remove the data or reload the page that data remains there as a part of form input so it gets uh, submitted with the same uh, url because then it will retrieve data from the session and not from your uh, input okay sir so just uh, uh, i mean uh, click on url tab and doing it uh, uh, from the scratch will uh, uh, remove this issue okay uh, yeah so i'm not uh, okay there is one more doubt having uh, issues with portal and i am observing this issue with uh, other students also so at this point not i'm not able to figure it out what the issue is but i'll post it or you know forward it to the the team that the portal is having some issues and uh, we'll see what can be done okay sunny sir so, but how to submit the assignment ah uh, you can wait for now if uh, uh, but okay you have you tried the hard refresh there is something called as hard refresh uh, yes sir okay it's not working still no sir okay fine or uh, have you checked the url so there is this uh, uh, fragment in the url which uh, has something like this so it should be 23p1 23p1 and then underscore and cs2003 something like this if the url gets changed other than this uh, you might face issue just check this once if it still doesn't work i mean hold on we'll i'll post it uh, forward this issue to the uh, the operations team and see what happens okay okay uh, yes amar Amar Sajid Ali, are you there? Yeah, tell me. Okay, you can unmute yourself and ask your query if that is not an issue. Okay, fine. Go ahead. Okay, what's your doubt? Yeah, Sunny, I'll forward it to the team. Okay, let's see what uh, what happens. I mean, I've been receiving queries regarding the same, and even in discourse and mail also. So I'll try to forward it so that uh, this can be. I mean, there is a follow up on this. 
Okay. Yes, right, uh, Amar. Hmm, right. Yeah, so I mean, don't worry about that. Uh, if the file that you are saving in static folder is changing, don't worry about that. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that should be okay. Uh, I mean, see, if the file, if the image that you are generating is changing, this means your data that you're generating is changing. Okay. That caching issue will not be an, uh, the caching and all will not be an issue if uh, when your evaluations are, uh, evaluation is done on the portal. Right. So we take care of that. Okay. Is that all? Sir, image is .png file or .jpeg file or anything? Anything, anything. Anything would work. Oh. Okay, fine. So I assume there are uh, no more doubts and uh, we'll move ahead with the agenda of this session, okay? Let me uh, share the screen. So basically what we are trying to do is uh, uh, a bit follow up and let us go in uh, more bit of understanding in what we have done in the witness this session, right? So I just introduced Flask a bit and uh, I was randomly talking about certain uh, uh, routes and everything, okay? So here I just have created a small problem statement uh, for you all and uh, we will be working on that, okay? So in that case, it becomes easier for us to actually follow up on a process, okay? So basically we are trying to create a dynamic web app as we call it, and that will be done using Flask, okay? So what we're trying to do, we are creating a codes page, okay? And uh, we'll be entering, uh, so basically we'll start off with creating a page where we can give our own inputs, okay? So that input can be anything uh, based on uh, the things that you want to print on a uh, page. Okay, so let's say I want to put in my information, my name, everything, some more information about me, my profession, and then a quote from my side. Okay, everything that, uh, everything of that will be taken in the form of uh, uh, HTML form and uh, then taken to the, the controller. Okay, and then we will render that same information in a properly uh, rendered page. Okay, so basically we are trying to create uh, two pages here. One is the the base.html that will actually uh, act as a template and the other one is form.html. I mean, we can name it anything, but I'm um, just talking it for the understanding purpose. Okay, so that will be a form.html which will take certain input inputs from our side. Okay, we'll try to create form in a you know cleaner manner so that it becomes easier for us and also the, uh, I mean, as a developer and as a user to understand the form. Okay, in the last session, I just created one input field, but this time we'll go ahead with uh, multiple fields and how to manage them. Okay, and uh, on in the process, we'll talk about things like HTTP methods, right? And how are we using two different conditions to uh, use either of those? Okay, why are we exactly using form? And uh, then we'll uh, come across things like or methods like render template, redirect and request. Okay. How are they used and how to uh, get the data that you are actually using in form to, uh, I mean, to process with it because in each, in the, in the witness this session, what did we do? We took the data and we know that data was saved in a key value pair. Okay. But that is not uh, what the whole purpose is of the data, right? So data is remaining or staying with the browser forever. That is not what we want. We want the data to be sent to server and server doing something with it, processes with it, and then uh, uh, sends it to somewhere else or renders a particular page based on that data. 
right so this will uh, allow us creating dynamic web application why because the application or the page that gets rendered later is uh, uh, not a static page the information displayed on that is not static but will based on whatever we post in the form okay so that is what we are uh, trying to do any issues with the question statement no sir okay so i'll be i mean uh, later on once this session is done this is a pretty small question statement right so once the session is uh, done i'll be sharing all these files to you uh, i am maintaining this uh, uh, since i'll be using replit uh, sorry vs code i'll be creating a directory in my own local system okay so you see that there is this uh, uh, queue statement markdown which you can render in replit if you are working with replit and then uh, the pdf file Okay, so if you are working on Replit, just open Replit and create a Python Replit. All right, that will uh, do, and then you can uh, start coding along with me. Okay, so this is the rendered question statement which I have opened. For those of you, I mean, just quick, uh, yeah, hand raised. Yeah, sure. So you can mail your assignment. But this will not be for evaluation, right? I won't be able to evaluate it. It's like, uh, yeah, just for uh, if there is any issue and all, I will be able to clear that. But evaluation, I cannot done based on mail because that is happening uh, by auto evaluator. OK, so I'll uh, just give me some time. Let me put it to this theme. And then if there is a need for extension, we'll see. OK. All right. So what happens is, for example, if this is the current directory that I'm working on, if I want to open VS code directly, how do I do that? I just click on this tab here. Okay. And write CMD, right? So this will open command prompt in the same, uh, uh, working directory, right? So this will, this is my current working directory. Okay. And then to open VS code there, just write code, give space and give a dot. Okay. And then hit enter. It will open VS code. Uh, in the same folder. Okay, so this has opened VS code for me. Okay, now this VS code has already been opened, so it is giving me some prompt, but if you have not opened it yet, it will open there. Okay, another way of doing it is you open VS code from start menu. Okay, VS code will open the way it is showing here, but it will have its own page, right? The one it gives general information on creating a directory and all, so that will be there. How do you open the directory that we are working on? So you go to file, okay, open folder. So currently we are in week four. Okay, and this is the thing that I want to open, right? So I'll just select this, not double click on this, select this and select folder. Okay, so it will open for that for me. So if you see that uh, this is uh, week four, right? So this is the folder that is being opened now. All right, now apart from that, creating files and all, we know, right? So this is how we create file app.py will be the uh, file will be where we will be writing our application logic okay and then we will be as as we are going to work with flask i mentioned in the last session that uh, the rent the templates that it takes from it reads from actually comes from a folder called as templates right so we'll create uh, this folder called, called as templates okay and all the html file that we'll be working with the templates and all will be stored in this templates folder okay so let's uh, open this app.py and okay now about installing so what you can do is just open a terminal here so it will open terminal on the right for some of you it might open a terminal on the bottom so that that is not an issue so just open terminal on the right how do you install flask so for that we need this package manager called as pip so you just have to go pip install flask Okay, so the packages that we generally download are in the lower uh, alphabetical uh, range. So it is lower case. So you just have to write Flask. Okay, hit enter and it will download everything along with the packages. Okay, uh, that are that come with Flask. Apart from that, what we will need, I mean, we won't need Jinja explicitly if you are using Flask. But if you want to work with Jinja, you have to do pip install Jinja. Okay, and it will install Jinja for you. Now, what about pip? If you do not have pip, you just have to open the browser and write install pip in Windows. Hmm. 
Yeah, so this is just the pip documentation and it will give you Windows way of installing pip. So open python.org. creating virtual environment and stuff is so okay. Yeah, so you see this, I mean, pip install pip. I'm not sure if that is the command, but see, this is how if it is telling you just try that and it will install pip and it's uh, the Python manager as we call it, right? So once that is installed, then you can use pip to install other man, uh, packages or libraries in the Python. Okay. I mean, there is uh, one complicated command, which I don't remember now, but you can look at, look for it on YouTube or something. I mean, just any other resource that would work, uh, see how to install pip and then you can work with it. Okay. So this command is not working. Pip is short pip. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's why I was not sure where, because how do we install one command from it itself? Right? So, so there is a curl function. Uh, I just found out. Uh, you uh, use the curl. Python should be 3.7 and above. Use the curl function to download the package, uh, get pip.py, and then run using Python. Uh, let me get that and share it in Discourse or some other forum. Yeah, fine. You can do that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So this is, I mean, the, the package manager that we are installing for uh, Python, that is pip is, uh, I mean, has its own uh, command, which I'm not remembering now. Let me search for that. And I'll, I'll also myself post it on Discourse. Okay. Because I mean, I've installed pip long back and I've been directly using it. Right. So not sure how to install it for now, but I'll post it on Discourse. Okay. Once that is installed, then you can uh, install these packages and then uh, start working on it. Okay. Uh, now let us uh, go to the question statement. I'll just read it out. Uh, I mean, reading it out means what we need to do basically, we need to create a page which renders the information that you put in with the help of form. Okay. And we'll be using all these things to make that uh, happen okay so first i have app.py okay so i'll be importing uh, the flask object from flask right so we'll use from flask import flask okay, so the second flask is actually capital letter right and the first one is first because this is the library and this is the flask object or instance as we call it Then, uh, I mean, as I, as I told in the last session, what we need to do is we have to pass on this module in the flask so that it considers this app.py is as a web application. Okay. So how do we do that? We create this, I mean, this is the conventional way of doing it. This app can be anything, but we will keep it as an app so that it, uh, I mean, it becomes easy to understand. Okay. Flask and then so this will pass on our app.py module and uh, make it work as an application okay 
then we keep on assigning the routes okay so as i told in the last session what happens generally every web application that we work with every button that we click uh, every page that we see is nothing but a, a, a manual of url okay so for example if i if i see this uh, google meet screen this is happening on or this is actually working on this url right so anything that needs to be rendered then anything that i want the server to uh, anything that the server wants to get rendered on a particular browser screen we have to map that page with a uh, endpoint okay and how do we do that we create routes okay so i'll just do one thing i'll explain so this is app dot route okay so this app dot route method actually does two things for us one is it creates the route and second thing is it defines the methods okay i'll come to these one by one okay and then the actually the value of this is uh, is nothing but a string of get and list and any any other http method that we'll be using generally our work will be done with these two right get and post so we will be passing them as a string of uh, as a list of strings okay now what what happens so this app right so this is this at the rate you see this is called as a decorator okay so this app dot route is basically a method uh that is mapping sir, my question. yeah sir that at the rate is a decorator hmm. decorator means um which uh, i didn't get it uh, yeah that's what i'm explaining right okay yeah so basically what is happening here uh let's say i create a function in python okay create function right so this is my function simple function it returns something right or let's say it print something okay so this is what it prints now this is well and good as far as python is concerned okay so what basically i'm trying to do here is i want this function to run when a particular url is hit okay how do i do it in python within if i am i am still working in this module and i want to run this function how do i do that i simply call it okay simply calling it will do the trick but here you remember when we are writing app.py we are actually writing a code of server and as a user i do not have any access to the app, the logic of server right so i won't be having access to this file where i call a function and something gets uh, done okay so what i want to do i want to do this calling this calling needs to be done this calling needs to be done whenever i hit a url right so this calling needs to be done whenever i hit a url okay and that url can be anything what that url needs to be or what we want it to be is something given in the form of string right that we by ourselves do that right but here how do i bring this functionality how do i bring this functionality so what actually happens is when i use this app dot route decorator by the term decorator we mean that i want to add an additional functionality to what my application can originally do okay i don't want to do that coding here okay see my objective is this function should run when i hit a url okay this is my objective this is something that i want to do whatever is there in the function that is there okay that will that is the next part but this function should get called when i hit a particular url right and how do i hit a particular url here in the url tab right so that is what i want to do now doing it by ourself will take a lot of coding lot of research and lot of uh, code uh, i mean uh, the python packages right install uh, uh, things that will connect my application to a particular server and then act for it and to reduce that effort what we are doing we are using flask okay now what is flask doing flask is providing me with this app dot route method 
okay so i don't need to i i mean i don't need to just use this app dot round method i have to decorate my function with it okay so basically what i do is i mean generally what you have seen this app dot route is accompanied by a function so what is actually happening my function remains still the same okay but it is having this additional feature of getting called when it is hit by a url okay so the actual structure of my function remains same okay and i really need to bother about what i want to do with that function okay the implicit thing that is happening is this function getting hit when i hit this url is actually an additional feature that is added to my this function okay without actually changing the code okay and how do we do that and what is actually doing that that this decorator is doing that okay so basically by the term decorator what we mean we add an additional function to our additional feature to a function by not exactly changing the code of function okay so what will how will how will this help me the uh, i mean the calling part when the url is hit is taken care of by this app dot route and the actual part what the function does will be left on me or will be left on a developer what the developer developer wants to do with the function when a particular route is hit right so uh, is this clear well, i mean what this app dot route is doing app dot route this method is actually assigning or passing in an argument okay now what are these arguments two things one is the url where i want to run this function and with what methods that is something that i'll do that provision is given to me and what i want this function to do that provision is given to me okay now what is remaining here calling this function when a particular url is hit so that is an additional feature which i don't need to really worry about and getting and that is getting added to my function with this decorator okay we can create our own decorators there is no issue with that so i mean when you i guess the week 5 content is still out right so uh, you will see that there is a concept called decorator where we are exactly not changing the actual content of function but yet adding additional function uh, functionality to that uh, original function okay so that is what python decorators mean this is not a flask concept this is a python's concept okay so you can i mean if for more clarity you can search for this but there won't be absolutely a uh, requirement of that why because we need to understand why we are using decorator or why flask is uh, making use of decorator okay so this is what decorator is doing this uh, at the rate app dot route two things happening here you uh, create the logic of function add the url by your own the uh, the calling of that function or mapping that function with the url is will be taken care of by flask right is is that clear yes sir right so i'll just add this comment uh, right here Okay, so that you know what we are, what what is the uh, implicit objective? Okay, so this is what we are doing with this function. Now, what is this uh, URL? Okay, so what is this forward slash? So this forward slash actually stands for base URL. Okay, this is called as uh, base URL. And what does it mean actually? This actually means this thing HTTP colon forward slash. 127.0.0.1 okay then port which is 5000 by default that's all this is what it means okay and then this forward slash i mean doesn't matter whether you give or not it will still work so this simple forward slash will basically mean this okay now every end point now what is end point for example if i want something to happen when i click this in the url tab okay then i'll have to that something has to be mapped with this uh, base url okay so what will happen print function hello world will run when a base url is hit okay whether or not this function is actually correct do we really need to do this way is a mat is a different thing okay but what is ex exactly hap happening here i have mapped a particular function with this url and what this means this is base url okay now everything i create after this will be a different end point okay why because every html file will correspond to a particular uh, uh, will correspond to a combination of particular url and http method okay is that clear now if i if i create an end point something like this 
for example you may have seen see here itself so you see this uh, https meet.google.com and then after that we see forward slash and then there is the meeting link right xta fnnh wcb so this is actually an endpoint this is actually an endpoint what is happening here this meeting will run when somebody hits this url so this is actually the base url of the uh, of the web app that we are using google meet and this is the endpoint okay everything that follows is nothing but an endpoint now what are these will come to that later these are called as parameters but we'll come to that later how do we define these endpoints something like this right so we another uh, i mean we create another route Is it here? And what is uh, the another? Let's say meet. Okay. So this. Let's say this is another function now. Okay. First is hello world, and second is hello world through meet. Now I'm not talking about whether this function is valid for a web app. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about mapping different function with different things. Okay. So here, I mean, since this is a different function, let us you know name it differently because you can map. a particular url with one function name okay or i mean you cannot map same function with multiple urls i mean that is and that is pretty intuitive right because you don't want a one particular url to hit and two different things to happen right you don't want that so you will have to uh, uh, what we say uh, different i mean there has to be different name associated with different name so what will happen this function will be called when i give url this and then the endpoint okay so this is what we mean by actually mapping a function with the endpoint okay is this part clear so uh, i'll also write this and i'll write complete this so this is actually meet and what this means base url plus endpoint endpoint i'll keep these comments so that you understand why we are doing certain things okay so basically what we are trying to do here first thing we understood that there is something called as decorator which is actually mapping my function to a url and uh, uh, calling it when a particular url is hit that is one thing second thing is what are what are these urls how do we define these urls okay so this is actually this actually is a uh, demarcation of base url and this is endpoint okay now this endpoint is something that we can create this is completely on us right i'll just save it okay now we'll go with the actual part of the application okay what did we want to do first first we want to create a form okay so okay here what i want first a form should be created i mean whenever i go to base url it should give me a form okay it is giving me a form this means that it is prompting me to give some information okay now if i'm getting so for example uh, let's say let me show you with yeah so i've created this jam before okay so let's say there is this is my this is my browser screen right so i am client okay and then there is a server okay now what is happening for some url let's not bother about that uh, i am getting a web page which is nothing but a form okay so it is this form and let's say this is happening at base url okay so i get this form so it ask me for a name and then there is this input and other information and there are certain number of inputs okay now if i'm getting a form or a prompt where i put in my information at one particular url if i fill in this information and send it back to the server server will have some information okay it will have the information that i filled in but how it will know that this information is actually the one that server myself a uh, server itself has asked right so i mean server sent a piece of a uh, page where it was asking for information 
and if this information if this page goes back to the server the same page along with the information should go back right if we are sending it with some other address let's say if it goes with this url server will not understand that okay what is this info i mean there is info i guess okay i get a page i get some information but what is this information okay so this is very important therefore it is very important to keep the url same okay because then if the server is sending information at a particular url it is expecting information from the same url right but there is an issue here what is the issue that we are saying that i want to map a particular page with one url only okay so one url one page okay which is the form then how will a filled information go back to the server keeping the info keeping the url same for that we will have methods http methods okay so now it's not only url it's the combination of url plus http method okay so url will keep on remaining same based on this changing http method server will understand whether an information is to be sent to the uh, user or client or whether a certain information is to be ret retrieved on a particular url from the client right so that's why i said that whenever i want a particular information to be rendered or taken from the server or sent to the server what actually remains unique for that individual request is the combination of url and the method okay and then for that we have defined certain methods right so one of the one of those is get okay then then there is post okay then then there is put delete and there are many more right i'll share a piece of uh, uh, web i mean uh, uh, a resource where you can study about it right and this is nothing but mdn docs i'll be sharing a page for http request uh, i mean where you can study about http request okay now these are not just variables right we are using here i mean in the in the code in app.py we are you see that we are using them as uh, simply list uh, or strings right strings added in the list that is all right but they do have their specific feature every uh, http method has its own specific features properties and based on these http method server handles a particular request and responds in a particular manner okay so that we'll see uh, briefly here okay so what will happen actually i mean if if i look at these http methods conventionally what i what do i understand from get this is to retrieve information right retrieve information we are talking about or we are talking with respect to client right retrieve information who is retrieving client is retrieving okay post literal meaning post information to the server right send information okay put this is for editing information okay and delete as we can understand is to delete a particular piece of resource okay not the code resource data right so i mean if we go by the literal meaning it becomes very easy to understand it okay i'll be using get method so what will happen when i am retrieving uh, an information okay so here if you see the form if the first page i see is the form it is the information was not sent uh, by me to the server the information or this prompt is nothing but an html right they are sending a piece of information whatever it is if it is coming from server it is the response and it is html right so first what is happening the information is coming from server to the client this means the client is retrieving information doesn't matter what information it is okay so here in our case it is the html that renders to a form right so this is uh, actually retrieval of information from the server so we will be using get to get a form from the server okay and then we will fill this form all the data is filled so what is happening user data is now being sent to the server okay and since the server should understand that okay it is coming from because i had sent this form 
so it is coming as a field form back to me so, so i should know how to use this information so for that the url will remain same but since the information is now getting transferred from client to server we will be using post right and i mean we will write code for both i mean the server should be able to send html form so we will have to code for that the server should be able to handle the information that we are sending so that should be um, uh, coded at the server everything or the managing every uh, url and every endpoint code for that has to be written at the server end okay client will be only looking at the front end where he either where he or she either uh, uh, uses the information that is being sent by the server or interacts with the application okay so there are two things that client will be doing right one is if this is a piece of text some static uh, information so we will be able to consume it the client will be able to consume it but if it is a form the client should be able to interact with that form and send that information back to server right so that these are the two things two different tasks that is happening in the same url so for that we define two different methods okay how do we use put and delete is something we'll see later okay uh, they don't need to work on i mean don't need to really worry about those two methods and even the task of these two things will be done by get and post by themselves okay now there is this property there are some properties of uh, get and post okay and based on those properties they handle request and the response from the server let's see that in brief so for example whenever we talk about a request Right. So every interaction that is happening between the server and the client is nothing but a cycle of request and response. Okay. For every individual thing, there will be a request uh, from the, I mean, client to the server and to that particular request, doesn't matter uh, how uh, the server handles, the server will send a, a response. Okay. So we have a request, we have a response. Now, every request has two things. One is the request head, okay, and the request body. Okay, similarly, every response will have response head and a response body. Okay, now these HTTP methods get and post play important role when we talk about uh, uh, when we talk about you know changing of information between request and response uh, between the client and the server okay for example now what will what will what will happen we what we were what we were trying to do we were trying to retrieve information okay from the server using get okay so we'll see that so first i need to request the server how will i request the server i'll type in that endpoint okay so this is the request okay that request will be visible in the request head okay and request body will have some more information based on the request okay but mostly the url the status code right whether a particular request was successful uh, whether the server was successful to understand the request and send the information back or there was some error at the server end or the endpoint that you defined or you sent was not you know found all these things i talked about in the last session that status will be sent as the response head okay so the url in which the request was made the url in which the response is sent back both will come in the head of the request and the response okay and then there is status code which will come in the head of response okay so so what is this head this head basically i mean in html how if we try to relate this with html what does head contain head contains the meta information meta information meaning the information that is important to the browser but not really important to us okay and the body contains the actual information which we want uh, the browser to show to us right same thing with the response all right so the response that comes from the from the server will have uh, the url on which it was sent right then the status code right these things are there and what is the response for example when we were talking about this form what was the response actually 
the HTML of the form, right? So that HTML will come in the response body. Okay, so response body will have HTML. Okay, and the endpoint or the URL or status both will come in the uh, in the response head. Okay, now this is something that the this is a response, right? So this is coming from the server to the uh, to the client. Okay. Now the thing is, if I want to send an information, if I want to send information with the help of get, as I said, the, the, the URL and everything will happen in head. And when I was ac actually asking for a form to the server, we are not, we were not sending any data, right? So there won't be any body. Okay. There won't be any body to that particular request because I was actually asking for a particular um, uh, a particular HTML file from the server, right? Now, when I use get, what happens? The information goes as a part of head. Head meaning it goes along with the URL. Okay, it goes along with the URL. So, if I try to send information to the server using get method, generally what I was talking about, we send information using post, right? But we can also do that with get. We will do it with post, no issues with that, but we can do it. Is it possible to do it with get? Definitely, yes. Okay. That's why when I when I talked about uh, individually this, I talked about conventional use. Okay. Conventional, what they should be used for. Okay. And practically, can we, can we use it to send data to the server? Definitely, we can. Okay. Now, what will be the difference? If the data goes to the server with... Uh, a get method and if the data goes to the server with post method. So what will happen? For example, if I want to send this data name equals to mad one. Okay. And we are assuming this as a credential and very critical inf information. Okay. Which no nobody else other than the client itself and the server should see. Okay. So if I send this information with the help of get, what will happen? This information will appear as a parameter in URL. Okay. So how it will appear, for example, I'm using base URL. So how it will appear, it will be coming something like this. HTTP colon forward slash local host. Okay. Then we give port number 5000. Okay. This endpoint. Okay. And even we don't need to give that. Then what will happen? It will go as a parameter. Okay. So it will be name. equals to mad one. So you see the complete information that I was trying to send, which was important to me is actually going to the server and it is very well, you know, visible in the URL, which is very unsafe, right? Because I'm putting in the information within the uh, URL itself. So everyone who has this URL should be able to get the data with that the later uh, server will be sending to, right? But if I do the same thing with post, if I send this information name equals to mad1 with post, it will go this name equals to mad1. This actual information will go in the request body. Now request body is not visible to anyone else other than the client and the server. Okay. So it's not only, so the, if you see this HTTP method, their sole purpose is not only to create a combination of URL and a unique HTTP method so that response decide, or sorry, so that server decide what to do. It is also the, it, they also govern the way information is being sent or received between the client and server, right? So what do you feel or what do you, uh, I mean, uh, think which should be the better way of sending information to the server? it will be post, right? Because we are encrypting that information or embedding that information as a request body, which will not be visible to anybody else. Okay. And if we are asking for an information to the, uh, I mean, to the server, we don't need uh, any particular thing that needs to be hidden, right? So that can go as a get. Okay. So apart from, you know, uniquely dec deciding what the server needs to do, their important job is to decide how a request is to be sent to the server. 
Okay. So if I see, if, if this is the credential, the server will authenticate, okay, this is the right user who is doing that. And then there won't be any purpose of hiding. There won't be any use of or need of hiding certain information. So everything will come to this uh, uh, client, right? So information that the uh, response uh, that the server is sending will anyway come in response body but it is dependent on how information that we are sending to server will go that depends on get or post right so if it is get this information will go as a part of url if it is post it will go as a part of request body right so a get method will generally not have request body but a post method will have a request body Okay, so these are the properties. Now there are things like item, potent, and safe. There is one uh, property that is item, uh, safe, and then there is other property that is item potent. Okay, I want you to go through these two properties. I'll give you a very good resource. It will be very uh, clearly understood. So I hope you got the understanding of this safe. Right? Yes, sir. Right. So this safe, what is this doing actually? The safe method, now this does not, now this relation does not have with the how encrypted your information is or not. Safe meaning if a method, HTTP method is able to make changes to the data, then it is called as unsafe. So here the, the context of telling, uh, context of defining a method to be safe or unsafe is what impact they have on the data that is stored at the server okay so for example let's say i have this information let's say i have name and password stored at server okay all right now if i want to just retrieve this name and password i'll use get method okay and i'll get them as a response okay but if i want to change this information if i want to change this information what will how will get will get be able to change the information no post will only be able to change the information on the data side so if a method is able to change the information then it is called as unsafe if it is not able to change the information it won't be called as unsafe it will be safe method right so conventionally what do we use get for we use get for retaining information right reading something from the server so if I'm reading something from the server, I'm anyway not making any changes to the server. This means get is a safe method. Okay. It is safe, although it looks unsafe because the data, I mean, transferring data, if we talk about transferring data, get is, get is definitely unsafe because it shows the information on the URL. Okay. But making changes to the data already existing at the server side, it is safe. Okay. Same with post. Can post make changes to the data at the server side? Yes. If it is making changes, it is unsafe. Okay. If it is not making change, it is safe. To what context? This context. Okay. So when we define this characteristic, it is based on the database side, not the sending and receiving, not the transfer side. Okay. If you look at the transfer uh, parameter, I mean, the way the information is getting transferred, then post is safe because it is saving my information, not getting it, you know, open to the world, but only open to server. Okay. So you get this uh, idea of uh, what HTTP methods are also doing, right? I'll uh, show you the, uh, the resource that we should work at. I mean, look at HTTP methods. Okay, so uh, this you can go through. If you see here, it will not only talk about get and post, it will talk about every other method. What you need to understand about is get, head, post, put, delete. That's all. Right? And then it when you click on any of the method, then it will also give you what it does, what it doesn't, and gives you the idea of uh, the, the properties, what it is. So you see that it is not safe, post. Okay? So not safe in context of making changes to data. Okay, safe in context of transferring data from uh, client to the server. Okay, so I hope this is clear. 
you can read on this more to get the understanding of what http methods are doing okay so now we will use them in our code so can you put this url in the chat we'll keep it for reference i have, I have already okay, okay thank you thank you okay so now we will go ahead with uh, rendering certain information so what i want is i want this base url to uh, send me the information uh, what the information it will send first it will send me the form okay a prompt where i can put in my information and then take that information to the server okay and then render something else okay render the same information in a better way that is what i want to do at last okay so what we'll do we have created this templates folder let's create a file here that is form.html okay so we have this form.html first create the boilerplate and everything okay. uh, then here I, in the title i'll just add some title okay uh, add info so it will uh, give the title of adding the info okay then here i will create a form okay this is the form now in the form tag i have to mention what are the fields that i want that i want to work on okay so let's decide on that first let's say i want to uh, put in my name okay first name then uh, what else we can um, put course not sure how is that important but we can put course okay then probably if we are working or uh, we are student we can just write in profession okay and then the actual quote that we want to put in okay so let us work with this uh, four fields now maybe we can also add uh, gender because i want to show you one component of the form and then later on, once this information is put in, we want to submit this information to the web, right? So we'll have submit. Okay, so these are the five, these are the five to six things that we want, uh, components of a form that we'll be creating right now. Okay, so first I'll start with name. Okay, every text field that we put in, okay, will be an input field. Okay, and its type will be text. So every field, if we want to create a field, we give, uh, this we create this tag input okay once input tag is created we define what type of input it is right so then type will come as an attribute okay what type it is text right because i will take my name as a text okay and then there will be something called as id id we can perform to now this selectors that is id is not only to assign uh, uh, styling it is used for bunch of uh, useful for a bunch of other things like selecting it for manipulation using JavaScript or adding label. So I'll be adding label now. I'll show you what I'm trying to do here. Okay, and uh, let me write uh, something which is different from name. Uh, let's say credentials, right? So I'll just write cred. Why am I doing this? Because there is an attribute called name. Okay, and we don't want to get confused within that. Okay, so here let that this can remain same right so if you see here id will is cred and the name is also cred what is this cred stand for it stands for credentials okay and then we end this uh sir one question <laughs> sir here id and the name both are cred right I mean, why we keep both are same? So that there is no confusion. You want to keep it different, just keep it different. I'm not able to think of any name, right? So that's why I'm putting it anything else. Okay. So, I mean, I'm just saying that both ID and name, they are doing completely different tasks. Okay. okay. I mean, I have added them. Uh, those attributes are doing two different tasks. So it doesn't matter what I give value to them. So, ID, so ID is for labeling. And hmm. name is for uh, uh, name is for using it within the server. I mean, at the back end. See, okay. for example, I'll show you. I'll show you. Just wait for a minute. Okay. So let us first. You understood that we are using this attribute type so that I will take that input in the form of text. Okay. 
second i said that id i'll give it an id so that i can label it okay so generally i mean the last time when we created form i created something like this name and the input right for now i'll just comment all this and save it okay so if you see this this name and then this input everything will also work the same okay just i'll show you how it gets rendered okay so i have i have also given you this idea of uh, live server right go live it will render this file for me yeah so you see this add info because that was the title and this name right so here i can write anything i want because it is text all right this name now you observe one thing if i click on this name nothing happens only just that the text gets selected but if i click on this nothing happens so basically this name written here is a piece of text that's all it has no identity no identity meaning the html doesn't understand that the information that you are putting in here actually belongs to name right it is simply a text that i have written and it is getting rendered okay how do i make sure that the information that i put here actually belongs to this right so that is the correct way of writing html form so for that we create something called as label <coughs> okay so label now here in label this now then we have to uh, specify for what you are using this label okay so i am using this label for this input but how do i tell that i am using this label for this particular input because i'll be using multiple inputs right this is where id comes into picture okay so here i'll attribute have, have have an attribute called as for okay and then for i have to specify what id i am using it for so if i write cred i am associating this label with this particular input okay and then this name can be a part of the actual content of this label okay how does that help let's even see right so if i click on name you see that my label got uh i mean active right the input got active when i click on name right you see that it is getting reloaded this is how html is knowing that this particular text that i'm putting is getting mapped with this piece of text initially it had no existence i mean there was existence but no uh, technical existence to it okay this is how we give label and it is very uh, a good way of writing html because generally you might see whenever you uh, you know fill any form you see that you click on the name and then that field particularly gets active right so this is how we give a label let's move ahead okay and this is what i want to do with the course also i'll just uh, copy paste it and change certain things right so here i can write course okay again the type will remain text so if now you just have to make sure that whatever id you are giving here the for has to be used for that right because that is the reason why why we are identifying i mean iding a particular input and label is understanding that okay this is what i'm using or this is what i have been created for right so course okay. name can be anything i can in in the previous case i you know uh, made them different here i'll keep them same okay so just to show you that it doesn't matter if these two fields remain same okay then again we'll go for profession job right just using shorter ones so that there is no unnecessary text okay now this whatever you are writing here will be actually acting as a key but whatever you write here will be actually shown on the html page right so here i'll write it in a better way which i want the user to understand right so i'll write proper course here then here i'll write proper uh, what do you say profession since it's a text field you can write anything right so even in profession you can write student doesn't matter okay then there is uh, gender and quote that's all so here i'll add gender now in in gender let's say let's try to create a drop down right because then there will be two genders male female and okay so we'll try to create a drop down 
okay and for that we'll be using select okay so we'll create a label first so just a quick question <clears throat> when we are referring on this particular screen when we are referring to a variable right hmm. so for example i'm talking about line number 12 line number 12 okay line number 12 when we are ref when we want to refer to the text that we will capture basis line number 12 hmm. later on hmm. technically will it use id or will it use name it will use name name okay yeah. so, so when id yeah, id is name, only to identify this element complete element right? i see okay so hmm. and name is the attribute that is a part of input right so whatever text you give in the input will be ident uh, will be assigned to this Okay. So ultimately, in the uh, in the browser, you will have a key value pair. What will be the key? Everything in the name, and what will be the value? Everything that you put in. Okay. So line number eleven and twelve are related by the word ID. Yes. And line number, uh, I mean line number twelve, the name portion is actually the variable which will store the content, which we can yes. refer later for any for any usage. Yes. Yes. Oh. That is the whole point. Sure, sir. Thanks. Hmm. All right. So here I want to use gender, and then uh, here let me just get the poll. Yeah, here I want to use gender. Gender. Okay. And this is just the label, right? And then we here we'll create a, a select because we want to create drop downs, right? A select. Right. So here, if I give ID, what should I give ID so that it uh, gives gets the label uh, gender? Yeah. Right. Because the ID and whatever is there in the for should remain same. Right. And then, what should I give the name? Right. So I'll give here name, and what what it will be? It will be gender, because I want to deal with the same name later. Okay. Now, if you see the select statement, what was the what is the difference between input and select? The difference between input is whatever I type in will be given as a value to this name. I mean this name uh, attribute, right? Whatever I type in. But when I have select, I don't have the privilege of typing. I will have to choose from predefined values, right? So if I have to choose from predefined values, there will be one more attribute that I have to work with that will be value. Okay, so that we'll see. Now, what will be what will come as a drop down? What are the options, right? What we'll see when you click on the drop down, we see the options that are available. So everything that we create within uh, uh, select is nothing but an option. Okay, and that option has a value. Okay, mean, and whatever we give here will appear in the drop down whatever we give as the content will appear as a drop down and when i select this mail and submit what will actually be recorded in the back end gender colon mail get this so name equals to value why did we why did we not have value here in input type text why because we were giving value by our own so we could not define it explicitly here here we will not give value by our own it will be selected among the predefined values so that value has to be given explicitly. Okay. Same thing will happen with woman. So everywhere where you have to select from particular set of things, you have to assign value. Everywhere you are giving values by your own, you don't need a value. Right. That's why we do not have value. We will work with name. One more for others. That is select. Okay. We're done with name, course, profession, gender. Next is code. Now, code, it is again uh, an input which is text, right? But if you see, I mean, the code, it can be a long piece of text. 
right? It can be a very long piece of text which might not be visible in this smaller box, right? So if I keep on typing uh, something like this, so it keeps on moving within, right? The box doesn't get increased, and then it becomes very uh, hard for reading, right? So it decreases the readability of the uh, the text that I'm putting, and generally this will happen when my text is large, right? So what do we create there in 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 place of uh, input? Type text. We will create a text area, right? So there is this uh, attribute called as text area. Okay, text area. So here we can again. Uh, what what will be required in text area? Only name, right? Because the type by itself, the la the lab. I mean the what we say, the element by itself is telling that we are talking about text. Okay. So here it will be quote, right? And I want to give the label also right so i'll create an id for that okay. and then we'll create a label this is this label yeah label this is for actually quote okay and then what what exactly it should uh, tell me it should tell me quote quote here Quote or it can be a simple article also. Quote article here. That's all, right? So this is the uh, this is the information that I'll be taking. Now, how do I send this information or how do I you know actually work with this form? So for that, I need to have the submit button, right? So this will be again an input, okay? But the type here will not be text; it will be submit. Okay. And then once we are done, we'll close this form and we'll remove. Okay, I'll keep this uh, uh, commented. So this is our form, right? Right. Submit. That's all. There is one more thing that we can add in submit. That is value. Now, how will this value be used in this form? I'll show you. Just give me a minute. Okay. Now let's uh, reload this and see. Right. So everything is coming here. Okay. Name. So if I click on name, this will be highlighted. If I click, click on course, this will be highlighted. Profession here. You see this? So here, this is these are something that I can give by myself. This predefined, and if you, if you see the difference here, so you see the drag down, right? So here, if I type something really big, I'll see that it will. I can you know increase the size of that tab and uh, uh, see the entire thing. Okay. Now only thing is arrangement. Okay. Let's arrange it one below the other, and this is where we will use break tag, right? So instead of the paragraphs and all we'll use break tag here okay one more uh, alternative to that would be you just use a div for every label i mean label and input pair you use a div so by itself it will break everything down right why because a div is a block element right we had talked about that all right so now what i'll do i'll just use break tag so after this label and after this input i want a break tag Okay, and this will be required after every tag, right? Okay, here it's here also. So we have this break here, so I don't think it is required here. We'll see. Then it will be required in. Or should I put it in front of labels? No, no, no. Wait. Uh, in, in front of. Text area and then in front of submit. Yeah. So yeah, quote and article is there that needs to come in next place. And even I want this article box to come below the quote and everything here. Right. So I'll use a break tag here and one break tag. So it should come below gender. Okay, so I'll put it not here. I'll put it here. So okay. I mean, a lot of experimentation you we, we can try with, and then finally we see that okay, we are getting things. So there can be a place also, I mean, a space given between these. Best way to do that: put every field within the div tag, right? But uh, I mean, you can try it by yourself. All right. So now. 
this is the form that I am creating. Now let's add some backend. How to deal with this form, right? So that's will do. That will do with the app.py. Okay. So basically, when I, you know, hit the base URL, the I am not sending any information. So I just want information. I in the form of this form, I want this information from the server, right? So what method I'll use? Get, right? And I mean, this is actually a request method, right? So there is something called as a request that needs to be imported. Okay. And then what we are trying to do, we are rendering form as a template. So we'll also in, in, uh, import a render template. All right. So these are the two things that we need to import. Now let's uh, map it. Let's say if request dot method equals to get okay, what should happen it should render template which one form.html do i need to write template slash form.html i don't need to write i mean what i'm saying is do i need to write this no sir i don't need to write because by itself last will take all the templates from the Okay, so this will happen with get and then we'll also write for post if request and let me copy this. Request dot method is post for now. Let's do nothing. Okay. So this is the basic controller that I wanted to create. We'll, uh, I mean, comment this for now. And then, uh, I mean, we'll use the app.run call. So one way of running this application, my application is done here. One way of doing that is writing here, flask run uh, app dot EY. But I'm not really sure with this method, so I don't use it. Right. So it is, I mean, I'm not really sure what it, what actually it shows. And I have never, uh, never tried to, uh, I mean, correct this mistake also. Right. So what I generally do is I use app dot run call here. Okay. Just app dot run call here. And that's all. Okay. Why is this easier way? Because then I can also, uh, add attributes to it like debug. I can give my own port. I can give the, uh, the host where I want it to run. Generally for those who are using replit, we need to give this. Those who are working on replate with the same app, give add this part to your code. Okay, we give the host here. Not required in VS Code. Right. Once my app is ready and I've given this app dot run call, what I need to do? Can you please write again app dot run host? Ah, right. Host equals to as a string zero dot zero dot zero dot zero. Okay, fine. Okay, so once this is done, my app dot call is done, and then here I can uh, run it using the way I do any module in Python, right? So you see that it is working and it is running on this uh, base URL. Okay, so I have mapped it here and it is running on this base URL. This does not mean that if I end, add an endpoint here, it will start running on that endpoint. No, it will start with base URL and then you have to explicitly give the URL be, uh, along with the endpoint to get a particular uh, particular uh, page rendered, right? It will start from the base URL. That is the reason we call it base URL because it doesn't matter what are the endpoints defined, it will, your application will start running on this URL, okay? That is the reason we call it as base URL. How do we address this? or use it, just give the forward slash. Okay, now let's uh, run this. Okay, internal. this means something has happened with my code. New function did not return a... Okay, fine. What is, what is the issue actually? So, I mean, I am getting this internal server error. So it is, I mean, in the last session we saw that it actually gives the complete error. What is happening? What is wrong with your code? Why is that not happening here? Why it is showing that internal server error and hiding the actual details? Because I have not added debug. Debug, right? 
So debug is not there. But what exactly is the error? It's not a render template. It's actually this has to be returned. So it is a return render template. Okay, let me also check the indentations. So it is a return render template. Okay, let's uh, close this and try it running once. Yeah, so now it will not show. Why now here with, now let's see what are the details. I got the page running, that is okay. Now let's see what are the details. Go to the network and reload this. Okay, I see this details. Now what are these headers? This means this is a request header. Okay. And this is a response. Okay. And what are what are actually this? These are actually the response header, not the request header, sorry, because this is what I got, right? So these are the re response header. So in response header, what do you generally see? What did I say? You'll see the URL, the request URL, meaning the URL by which, which the request was made, the URL or the method by which a request was made, it was get, right? Because we are not uh, sending anything. We are just trying to retrieve. Okay. Then address policy, the local host, right? And uh, then we'll talk about other things. So this is all details that are there, all a part of head. Okay. What is the response? We will get an HTML. What HTML will get? The exact same HTML that we have written as form.html. Because if I'm here, I'm actually at the server side. Okay. And when I'm at the browser, I'm actually at the client side. So here I'm using the application and here I'm developing the application. Right. Everything form.html, everything that I have created will uh, be served by this uh, application. Right. And here I just have to use it. All right. So you can see even the comments and everything have come. All right. And uh, preview. So preview is actually the rendered HTML file that you see. Okay. Timing and all is not that important, but you need to just see header because this is important to see these three parameters. Okay. And the response. So this is response, right? So what did I say? The HTML that will come by the server, doesn't matter what the request is, the HTML or the response that will come, the HTML part of it, the actual content that you want to see, it will come as a uh, response body. So this is body of the response. Okay. And this are that therefore these are in explicitly written as headers. Other everything else is the body. Okay. What else can we see here? Okay, so every other thing is not really important, but uh, these are the important things. This executor.js you don't have to worry about for now. This is actually being added by uh, some other external features that Flask is doing, right? So you don't have to worry about this now. So let us uh, close this. So I hope this is clear. Now what I'll do is, uh, let me keep that open. Now let us add some information. I'll add my name. Course is mad one. Mission. Yeah, so add info why twice. Okay, fine. So this is course instructor and I'll write any article here. What should I write? Okay, and then when, it's, when we submit, see what happens. Okay. So when we submit, I what did I do here? I had not defined post method, right? I did not mention what is the method, even in the form, right? Where was the form? Okay, where is the form? Here, form.html. I just created the form and I did not define what method it will use, right? So what is happening? It is the form by itself is again using get method. 
Why? Because we have not given that power to form to use post method. So what is happening here? I'm sending information to the server when I click on submit. That is okay. But this information is sent to the server using get method. So what do you expect? Where will the information be available? Server pay. No, server it is there. I mean, I have not even, I have not said that it will be available on server. I'm just saying that I'm sending information to the server using get method. How do you think the information is going to the server? In the request, I mean, parameters. Is the, as the parameters, right? So if you see this, see? Yeah. So every information that I've sent through form is now going to server with this uh, as, a, as a part of uh, URL, right? And if mm -hmm. you see here, what, what do you see in the in the URL? You see info equals to others. How did it come to know how to what to take as uh, value and what to take as key? So that will come from the form because see, this is the info. So info will take others. Course will take madman. Prof will take course instructor, right? Gender did I give or not? No, I did not. So let's see what it took. Yeah, it took me. So it will be, I mean, the default one. Okay, and then the code. And if you see that it will, it is, you know, it is uh, managing the spaces and everything by plus and and, right? So both, uh, I mean, two parameters are separated by this separator called as and, okay? And the space will be handled by plus sign and everything that follows this question mark are nothing but the parameters. Okay, is this clear? Yes. Okay. Yeah, but this is not what I want, right? I want this entire information to go to the server as a request body because I don't want this information to come here, right? That is why yeah. we are using post. So, I mean, you see two things here. One thing, you can use get method to send information to the server. That is one thing, okay? The, the, the way in which server will handle this request will be different. That is a different thing. That is okay. Okay. But... It is completely possible to send information through get. So you, I mean, if somebody asks the question, can you send information to the server using get? Definitely yes. Should you use it? No. Right? Conventionally, we should not. Why? Right? Because we are get is defined to retrieve information from the server, and let us let get do that. Right? Let's not send information through that. Okay, but technically, and, it is uh, possible. yeah. And, and also, is it like unsecure if we use like get? to post information you see the information completely in the url right so it is definitely unsecure yeah. Yeah. right i mean for example if you have this url you don't need the to fill these fields right mm -hmm. so it is completely unsafe as far as the information goes is get method safe what will be the answer Yes, sir, it is safe. It is safe. What did I say when I talk about methods and uh, I mean, safety and not uh, its capability of changing data at the database site. If it is able to change data at the database site, it is not no. safe. It will not be able to do that. So it is safe. Okay, let's move ahead. All right, now we'll try to handle form through post method. So there are two things missing here. What should happen when submit button is clicked? Okay. And with what method the information should go to the server, right? So for that, we do, we have two attributes defined in form. One is action. Action. Right. What does action do? Action means whatever, whenever you click submit, what should be hit? Okay. So whenever we click submit, we want to go back to our original uh, URL, right? So here in action, I will add my base URL because see here only I'll be able to deal with it, right? So I want that information to come back to the same URL. Right? That's why in action, I'll add this. And then I have to specify method. Method post. These are the two very important attributes that you have to add in the form. Okay, now save it. Okay, let's see what happens with this. Oh, uh, sir. 
so the here the action attribute will specify that uh, that it has to come back to again to the base url let's say yes so whatever you add here the information will go okay. and hit that url okay so uh, i mean where is this yeah and where are we defining the uh, i mean the logic for handling post method in the base url so yeah. what needs to be added here the base url okay. okay right so that needs to be done okay so what i've done i've added action i've added post okay and then i'll try to run it again close this because i don't want the stored information to go anywhere close this okay and let us uh, open it back hmm. yeah so we see the form right let us open that uh, developer tool also and see the network okay so i'll add my name again course madwin profession you know, profession course instructor mail and in post okay we'll submit this okay internal server error wait right so what is happening here i have used request dot method post but i am using pass so nothing is happening here actually but i mean it is uh, uh, doing that thing why because if you see here see this do you see this what does it show it shows that your server i mean your the client when the submit button was hit it was it get back to this i mean base url with post method okay what it returned is something else okay i mean what we are able to come here right what was returned is something else we have to leave that okay let's handle that for now but okay anyway leave it but now you see the headers what was returned is a different thing because we have not defined any code that will handle this data let us see what happened to the data in the headers we'll see request url is this but request method has now changed to post okay because how because we have defined it in the form okay address okay fine everything else preview internal server error because that's what server returned as the response okay and this is all the html there is one tab extra that came here that is payload right and that payload is request body okay now the information that i sent through form is actually coming in the request body and the proof of that is you see the url there is nothing in the url okay so the information that appeared here in in the form of question mark and plus and equals to has now been encrypted in the request body and that form is here so you see this form data right view source so source will actually show you the uh, the way it would have been you know uh, written in the url okay so that data is now taken and then uh, added in the form of view parts right so in the form of request body so the, for transferring now the data has become safe right nobody else can see i can see it in the browser side because i am the client i have sent it right and <clears throat> this data will now be available only to the server if we have handled we have not handled it that is a different thing but it will be available only to the server right now we will talk about handling it but is this idea clear what i am trying to say here this is the whole base of this lecture what i wanted to show you okay handling is a different thing and it is an easy thing yeah uh, also can you just tell me the like the difference between a slash and hash like uh, in the form html like when you use action mm -hmm. okay fine i'll show you so generally in form what happens is i mean when i click on submit let's say i am creating a form and i want to test it okay so when i click on submit i have to actually give an action okay and if that action is not defined i will get something like this internal server error okay so i want the form to do nothing when i click on submit then i give hash okay so basically the page reloads when i give hash but this forward slash is saying that you hit the base url okay 
so when i add action here i mean whatever value is added as an action this is nothing but a url okay so let's say if i have defined an endpoint slash info i would write that if i want my form to go to that url okay but i see where i'm in in the app.py where am i handling this post request in the base url so this url has to be written in the action so basically uh, see how do i go to base url either i type here okay but how do form goes to a particular url by action okay because i can write i am a human being i understand i can write form has its way of hitting a particular url and that way is nothing but action so when we write anything that is written anything meaning everything that is written in action attribute is nothing but it points to a url in our case it will be base url so forward slash okay if i want this form to do nothing with the data i'll just add uh, hash so nothing will happen is that clear yeah okay so we have we have been able to send this information now what will happen i'll deal with that information here okay so here what is the information that i'll take the information that i got through payload so that i have to deal with uh, with uh, with the post method right how do i deal with each and every parameter first is just like creating variable so what was the variable name right how do i assign this variable with the actual name i will use request dot form dot get okay and then within get i'll actually write the what will i write the, the name, name value yeah info right so it is info to you est right so this request is first it is used to understand the method of uh, request that we are sending and then it is then you used to retrieve the value that was sent through form right so request dot form dot get and the argument of get method will be the the name whatever we have assigned to form so whatever value for example here in payload this others will then go to uh, this name value okay once i get a value in my in a in a variable in python i will i can i can do anything with that right similarly i'll get the other things now uh, vs code provide me very one good thing control d it keeps on copying okay. so i'll take as many of those i want i guess 5 okay and then i change first is name second is course okay. third is profession so i'll just write pro fourth is gender i guess okay and uh, fifth is code the main important thing right and these values have to be correspondingly changed with their the name that we have given in form right so first it is name then course then prof then uh, uh, gender sorry so name that was info then course then prof and then gender itself And then quote is quote. Okay, if you are not sure, we can either check form or we can check this form data, right? So now all the variables are here. Okay, all the variables here, here, here. Now what I want to do is, I just have to, uh, I just have to render this, right? So then I'll use a return render template. Okay, return render template. and here i'll pass the output.html let's say okay and then along with output.html i have to pass on these variables okay i have to pass on these variables so i'll just uh, write name and then what will be the format what i have told you first the, the, the i mean the variable name that i want to handle in html then the variable name that i have given right so this name it will be used in html and this is what is assigned so you see the color difference right and similarly we'll add others course equals to course uh, 
pro equals to pro. Sorry, sir, what is the color difference? Color difference meaning, see, when I selected this, this name it is dark blue, but oh, this okay. name is this. Okay. It is showing that this is referring to this name. Yeah, yeah, got it. Sure. Yeah. Pro gender. Gender and then the quote. Right. So we took the five things, right? Name, course, pro, gender code. All right. And then now time is to create the output.html. So like in lab assignment, uh, there's a warning message, something went wrong. So how to make that? Uh, where exactly? In lab assignment three and four. Hmm. Yeah, so basically what you have to do is, uh, I mean, render that. You create an HTML file. My output.html went. Just came a minute. This is output.html. Right. So just you create a file name wrong.html or something like that and write the, uh, what we call, uh, it, it is static, right? Because something went wrong is a static thing. It is not changing. It is, I mean, it is not something like that. Something went wrong with student input. Something went wrong with course input. That is not the case, right? Doesn't matter what you put. If there is a mismatch, it should show a static HTML. So you can create static HTML. And based on uh, if you're getting data, if you're not getting data, then you can render it, right? So you have to create three conditions. If this, render this. If that, render this. So along with the method, you also have to define if within that, right? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, here in output.html again we'll be creating that uh, boilerplate and then let's name it to output. Okay. Now I I am open to format the data as I want, right? So I'll just um, first I'll write in h1. Okay, H1, I'll write quote from, I want to write in the name here. So what I'll do, I'll write this quote from name. Okay. Then uh, here I want to directly print the quote, but I want to print it in, let's say H, H2. Okay, so here I can simply write quote. The variable should remain same the way we have taken it, right? What are the other things uh, here? Okay, so here I'll uh, write another H3 and I'll mention he is a of right. So this is what no, pro. This is what I've defined in the uh, my controller. So this is controller, right? Because my server code is written here. And this is my template. This is view. Right. So what are the variables? Pro gender. Okay. Now how do I put me ma uh, male or female here? Right. So what I can do is this he, right? There can be a, a female writer who has writing in the code. So this he and she should come based on what is the gender, right? So we can code on that. Let's see whether first this is working or not. And I can again write one more uh, line. Right. So this is very vague, right? Because he is a gender. What if it is a female? So he is a female will come. Right? So that is not what we want. We want to change this he or she based on what the gender is. So we'll do that uh, later. Let's first uh, let's handle this. Okay. All right. So we have written code in the post also. So if it is post, it will take all this data and return gender.html. Okay. So let's uh, try that now. So, I mean, why, I mean, if I, when I reloaded that, what happened, the form data was already there, right? And the method was already post. So it took, okay. If I had closed this and re, you know, what I'm saying is this. So if I see, if you see, if I write this localhost 5000, it will give me the URL I want. And let us, 
Let's hit this. Let's see what happens. Yeah. So I see the form, right? So the tab is closed. The cache memory is gone. The data is not there. So it will post with get method. But when my data was already there and I reloaded it, what happened? The data was already there. And now it also knew how to handle the post method. So it did that, right? So we'll change this now. Let's change to Abhishek, one of our course instructors, right? Uh, and he handles it's a mat too. Profession is again a course instructor, mate, right? So we will be studying UJS in mat too. Okay. So with that, we submit and we see everything coming here. So we see that we are, I mean, we are taking information, handling it and putting it in another way, right? One way, one is this, right? You see the network and stuff, you'll see everything coming. And here the post, I mean, if I click on localhost, I'll have the payload headers and here it is 200. Okay. Why? Because now my post could handle. So it was returning a proper response. Initially, it could not handle the server crashed. So it gave 500, right? And we see the preview, we see the response, everything is there. In the response, you see everything, every placeholder is replaced, right? So, I mean, I gave this task to you, how to manipulate this he and she, okay? I will show you one other thing. So let's say what I want to do is, I want to take this data, okay? I want to render this output.html, but I want any other endpoint to handle this. Okay. I don't want this uh, particular endpoint to handle. For example, what I'm saying is, let's say uh, here in output, when I post and click on submit, the information is coming on the same URL. I want the information to be handled at the same URL, but I want this output at dot html to be rendered and not by the same url i want it to go to some other url and then render it okay so basically what i want to do let's say i want to click create an endpoint here something like this output okay what should happen when i am in the base url i given all the information with get and all i submit uh, click on submit the information should come and this URL should change to output. Okay. That is what I want to do. So one thing I understand that if I want to render this HTML page at output, I have to create an endpoint called output and use render, right? This is what I have to use. So that is what I'll do now. So I'll create another URL, which is here. So I don't have to do much work. Okay. And here I'll use output. output that's all then i want to uh, i mean uh, render this template with a return output dot html this has to be given in strings okay now what i'll do is Instead of passing it just like this, I'll create a list of it. Okay. So I'll just write data equals to, and I'll create a, a dictionary that is name course, not dictionary, sorry, list pro uh, gender and quote. Okay. So this is the dictionary and instead of passing on all these, I'll replace this everything with data equals to data, right? Data equals to data. So same thing, it will work, but this is not what I want to do. I don't want to render output.html. I want to uh, send this data to this URL and then render output.html. Okay. How do we do that? This is called as a redirection. Okay. You do something at URL, one URL. And once your task is done, what is our task to get the form information? That is our task that was done by post method of base URL. Later, what I want is I want this information to go to some different URL and get rendered. Okay. So instead of this rendering, I'll use a redirect. This is what I've been, I had, I will be importing next. So this is one of the methods that 
that can be used to redirect. I mean, do something at one URL. Once that information uh, processing is done, you take that information and send it to another URL. Okay. So I can use a return redirect. Okay. And within this, we have to provide another uh, URL that is, I mean, another method we have to use that is called as URL for. Okay. Now, this is a method we have to import it. URL for. Okay. Redirect URL for and URL for we have to provide what URL I want to go. What is that URL output? Redirect URL for output or you can simply write complete URL, HTTP and everything. Right? Redirect URL for and then here we can pass data equals to data. Okay. So here what will happen? In this URL, I'll be having data and I'll be rendering data, right? This will happen, okay? Let's see, I haven't tried that before. Let me see. Okay, so we have saved this and we have to uh, close and rerun the server because we are not using debug. Okay, now what, one problem with the template is initially it was individual values. Now it is a dictionary, uh, sorry, a list. So we have to handle it not by actual names, by the indexing, right? So we'll see that how it works. Okay, let's see. Let me close this. I have the form. Let's put the uh, data. Okay, some issue. Okay, fine, fine, fine. All right. So that's what I said when I mean, when I say I don't really worry about the uh, uh, worry about the syntax. So what is actually happening here? So I've used this URL for, right? So in URL for when we pass on, when we use URL for, we don't have to write the URL. We have to write the function. Okay. So it is actually URL for func2. Okay. func Okay. So URL for func2, that is what we are meaning. Okay. Sometimes I, uh, uh, I mean, I get confused with the syntax, which is absolutely normal, right? So that Sir, is okay. Just one question yeah. over here also, like uh, we, uh, it was able to logically identify when we were writing name equals name, right? It was logically identify which name to use for HTML and which is the variable over here. Right. Right. So over here also, if we give instead of func2, I'm just thinking hypothetically. So mm -hmm. if we give uh, instead of def func2, if we write output as the function name. So will yeah, it definitely possible. Definitely possible. not an issue. I mean, because see, I am just, uh, I mean, this func2 I created just to show you that these two function names cannot remain same. Right. And if they cannot yeah. remain same, you can put it anything you want. Anything. Output. Okay. So here so you will, have to change it to output. It will automatically identify between the endpoint and the function name, right? Yeah. Why? Because every function will be mapped to only one endpoint. Right? That is what we have been doing, right? Yes. So right. One function, one endpoint. One function, one endpoint. So URL for, if you use, then uh, you just have to give the function name and it will be automatically mapped to this URL. Right? I mean, what is the alternative? Don't use URL for and in the redirect directly give the endpoint like a string. So that's why I got confused. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay. Yeah. So the issue is it is running, I mean, doing something, it is hitting the URL, but the thing is that I'm trying to return a list, all right, that needs to be handled in the uh, form. Okay, so that I'll do, 
uh, in the output sorry in the output or html these names now don't exist right so here instead of name i'll be writing data and indexing it zero okay quote was wait let us go to app.py so this is one zero one two three four quote is four and everything else is accordingly so data zero let me copy this Quote is data four. Okay, so was uh, data much uh, sure. pro is data two and gender is data three. Okay, let's see if this works. Let me see if I've understood the error correctly. If we still face problem, we'll go for the syntax, right? I mean, what is the syntax of URL for and everything? Same error. All right. Maybe I'm not able to use the uh, this thing uh, redirect. Okay. Let me you don't not use URL for it. Okay. You can redirect output. And let me also do this uh, debug equals to. I'll redirect to output.html that is not an issue but we will have to use url for to actually give the data written redirect this is what it will do understood and uh, the data so we do not have this data here unless we pass the data right okay okay let us try this index of url for i mean this is you can use or I mean use web anytime you want, right? URL for fast. Okay, so this is URL for how does URL for works? And this is and we want to actually give the data. Right? Yeah. So URL for this is function name and key value. Okay. So we will pass on the data. So it is this is what we are trying to do. Redirect URL for key equals to value. So basically we are passing on a dictionary. So it should take the dictionary and work. I don't want to log in. Return redirect URL for space key and value. So this, uh, okay, this is function name in, in quotes. Function name in quotes. We are directly putting in the function name. Okay. So now this function name is output and that we have put in quote. Okay, let's see if this works. Sir, you have typed redirect two times here. Sorry. So it is actually written a redirect a URL for. Okay, let's see. Okay. 
theta is not defined. Okay. Theta is defined, right? Suppose gender. Where exactly theta is not defined? Okay. Shall we do that uh, key value? Let's do the key value. But I guess that should not be an issue because we have created a variable called data and uh, it should be defined. The rendered template output dot. Oh, fine. Sorry. That is not the issue. This is the issue. Data equals to data. So the data that comes from uh, this has to be uh, defined uh, like this. And what about the definition? Should we not give parameter after def output? Should we, should Very exactly. Uh, yeah. Line number 23, should we put data there in the function or not required? Uh, no. So see what happens is, the, I mean, till now we are working with uh, static URL, right? So sta the URL that we are defining remains as they are. But if we, if I want to take some data through URL, that data needs to be added here. Okay. That is called as uh, uh, working with uh, dynamic URLs. Okay, that is also called as uh, converters in Flask. Okay, we'll see that later. That is not required for uh, uh, this assignment also. But uh, we'll see that that is called as converters in Flask. And that is uh, added as an argument of function when we uh, add values in the URL. Okay, so I guess that should not be required at this point. Uh, my only, uh, okay, so where exactly it is saying that output render template output.html, this means this line, right? And data is, then I have to assign the data. Let me check if the data is getting passed on. Okay. The data is not getting passed on. That may be the issue. Okay. So we will then not use a redirect because the main purpose was to use get and post, which I have added, right? So to be able to render multiple functions with the uh, same URL, but different HTTP method. That was the whole agenda, but I was this, I just thought of trying something extra, giving a bit of that. And I haven't used that lately. So I'm not really confident with the syntax, but that should not be the issue. Let's see. Wait. Server, server is crash to rerun it. If this doesn't work, that we'll leave it as is, and I'll add this uh, the actual code, the running code, and we'll share. Still not working. That's the issue. Data is not defined. Actually, we are defining data here. This means. It needs to be rendered here. Should I try this? What you're saying? This is not, I mean, we cannot do anything. No, no. That's what I was. Uh... Yeah, I understood. Okay, let me know if this works because I'm not really sure. I wanted to show redirect. What exactly redirect does is it renders a uh, same file at different uh, URL. Okay, but that was not the whole idea. I mean, this was just an extra thing that you can work on, but basic understanding was this. I mean, you create a Flask application and to be able to deal with uh, multiple endpoints. Okay, redirect can be used for other, I mean, we have, we generally use redirect for other uh, things. Why? Because there we don't need to pass data from one uh, endpoint to other. We just have to redirect from one endpoint to other. Now, what about this data? How do we deal then deal with this data? The data comes from database. Okay. I mean, the data is there in the database. So we can explicitly use the data here because it will be then coming from database. Okay. Here we are trying to pass on the data. We're not really exactly sure with the syntax. So maybe we are facing issues and, and the time is getting wasted, but the uh, will, and I won't leave this uh, redirect at this point. I'll deal with it when we incorporate with data because then I'll have better uh, way of uh, explaining it. Okay. So can we use this uh, <coughs> dictionary thing in the previous long statement that we were doing? Return render template, then we were giving the name of the file. 
ha ha there you can use definitely we can just write data over there and then this the, thing yeah the line of the info it. needs to be written as is right yeah yeah just let me uh, uh, i mean uh, what we'll say let me comment this and instead of redirect let me use render template and pass on this list uh, can i suggest one thing uh, i yes. think uh, go ahead, go ahead. we have to write the function uh, <coughs> and pass the data value in the output for output function mm -hmm. that you are telling in redirect ha uh, in uh, line number 16 Return render uh, template. Okay. Then uh, whatever that you have written URL for, then uh -huh. you write the function and in that and pass the data, the list. No, uh, the thing is, see, um, had it been directly output something like this, then no, we yeah. would have passed. But now we are passing it in the form of string, so I don't think that should work. but this will definitely work because here we are using the same url okay so we do this template not found why because we are rendering output we have to render output dot html save it and let's see yeah so it's working here all right so i mean uh, about the data i mean the approach that we took in passing the data is not wrong the way url for is handling maybe there is an issue okay but we won't stop or we won't uh, i mean since the redirect is not working in this session we'll not uh, stop at it we'll take redirect in uh, other sessions where we have uh, a database okay because then the data needs need not be you know transferred from one url to url okay data has data is there at the central database where we will be retrieving data from the only thing that a redirect does is uh, pass from one uh, url to another url and there is no need to pass data if at all i want to pass data within the url i'll use converter that is called as uh, that is the making use of variable url okay that we'll see in later lectures okay so when in in the next uh, session i'll be uh, introducing sql uh, alchemy right so that is an orm which will be using for understanding the database models and their relationships okay so when we create an application with sql alchemy we will have data already there and then we'll use redirect okay so we'll stop at this for now okay if there is any doubt till this point just So I don't uh, know why this is not working for me. Uh, uh, what is the data? Problem? The same thing. Data equals data. I'm trying to render it through a template. It's not returning uh, what I'm expecting. Uh, have you changed the template uh, such as this? Uh, where is it? Output. See here. So your screen is not visible. Oh, sorry. You have have you modified this? Yes, I've modified it. Okay. So, what is it uh, showing? Is it showing error or something else? Yeah, it's showing error. Okay. Can you share? So, actually, it's uh, for the project. So. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so what you're uh, what you're trying to do? You're trying to render using render template, right? Yeah, right. And output dot HTML and data is passed as a list. Yeah, yeah, same exactly the same thing. Okay, can you paste the error? Sure. In the chat. Sure. Sir. Yeah, I'll definitely post the uh, the code for installing pip. Okay. and other things so don't worry okay others any any issue with whatever i have told today did i was i able to make uh, the wednesday session more clear 
yes sir yeah. yes uh quick question so about the about vendors. the direct part yeah so quick question uh, the wednesday sessions uh, the data has it been loaded in uh, supplementary content Wednesday session did I take? I mean, I just I was just showing, right? I, I thought that is not relevant. So what I'll do, I'll post both. I mean, Wednesdays and today's sessions. Uh, Either day, and... one session is uh, needed uh, for the assignment. Uh, so I yeah, will be using that as a template. To... Okay, fine, fine, fine. All right. Thank so you. I'll post both these this code and uh, the I mean today's code and the last session's code. There is hardly any difference, but this one is more organized. Because I took everything according, right? So I'll post okay. both things. Okay, thank you. Sir, I'll send it through email. Maybe it requires a little more discussion, so this will extend. Then I will send okay. it through the email. Too. Sure, sure, okay. Okay. Others, any any issue regarding today's content? Uh, not sir, but I wanted to know like about images in flask like do we uh, do we really need the static folder to have the images yeah we don't need a static folder that is there just as we need templates folder we will need yeah. static folder okay yeah because i was trying without it first of all so it wasn't working at all yeah, yeah that is required so Flask has this uh, two components which are required. One is the templates folder and one is static folder. Templates folder will have our you know uh, HTML files only. Static mm -hmm. folder will have every other file that we'll be using. It will it will have CSS, okay. Uh, it will have uh, images. It will have JavaScript file. So all these files mm -hmm. by themselves are not changing. Therefore, uh, we will have uh, all these files stored in static folder. And same uh, as we don't put that endpoint, right? Template slash index.html, we don't need to put static slash image. It is, I mean, if we are trying to render an image, we it will by default search in it, it in the static folder and then do it. Uh, yeah, so I mean, yeah, I mean, somebody from the uh, right, so I, know, I actually fixed this, so I don't know whether it will work or not. Hmm. So in the second endpoint, you just have to add one line. Uh, if you go back to your the redirect, uh, the second endpoint. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, not. I mean, I think you commented out like where we have to route it to slash output slash. Uh, In the app dot No, this is app. Am I sharing? I'm sharing, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So basically, when you are uh, redirecting um, to the second endpoint slash output slash. Huh, this one. No issues. I'll I'll I mean when I add this code. Yeah, yeah. So you have to add just one line before uh, render. I mean before mm -hmm. returning. You just say data equal to request dot args dot get you know, within oh. bracket data. Right? Because you, you okay, have to okay. got it. Got it. Got yeah, it. that's the because it is being passed as an argument. Argument. Okay. And, and so you have to get that uh, request uh, object, then the, from the arguments, you have to get the data. That's all. Okay, okay. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, fine. So that's what I said, right? When we, uh, I mean, what is happening here, when I want to transfer data from one URL to URL with a redirect, this data will go in the URL as, a, uh, as the parameters. Okay. So how do we deal with parameters? That is something that I've not taken. Okay. So we will uh, not, uh, uh, so you are saying that request.args, right? That thing I've not taken. So that's why I won't use it. Uh, so we'll leave it as is. We will use a redirect when we have the database component. Okay. So I'm, uh, this is on me. I'm leaving it with uh, a redirect part in this session and I'll cover it in the, with the next part in Flask SQL Alchemy. Sure, sir. So just one more question. Is it like either line number you have commented out? If you can just go back to this mm -hmm. code, please. So is it like either line number 16 will work or this uh, 22 to 26 will work? You have commented out. But if we have this not commented out, mm -hmm. will it get confused and it throw, throw some error? No, no, you have defined no something. I mean, uh, one template can be but rendered by multiple endpoints. 
So it will render output.html with this endpoint also, and it will end uh, uh, render sorry. with this also. Sorry. Hello. So if you if you uncomment line number twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, hmm. uh, will it still work the same way? No, the only difference will be it will here the data is not there, right? So I cannot use this data. Okay, I'll have to manage the data. So if I render this output.html with output as endpoint, it will only render the uh, output.html along with the placeholders. It will not have the actual data. Okay. Okay. And when I do that with uh, with the the base URL, it is having this data, right? So if here if I find the way of incorporating data. I'll be able to render the same thing. No, I got it. Way of yeah, right. So can so you just execute? Um, so there's a there's a code one line of code we used to do. I put it on the chat if you copy. Yeah, yeah, code. yeah. I I know it's a so wait. So it is. Uh, so sir, no, that's fine. Don't use it. I actually want to see the difference. I mean, now how it will work. I got what you are saying, but I just wanted to understand how it will okay. work. Okay, let's let's see this. Will it take Will it take the line number sixteen or will it work the twenty fourth way? The base URL will render output.html with the right data. Okay. Okay. The output endpoint will render output.html the way it is written. Same thing as it is. Let's see. I'll show you. Okay. So our app is running. Is it? Yeah. So this is our data, and I submit it. It is. Rendering now output dot HTML is getting rendered with the base URL endpoint, right? Here I can see. Hmm. But if I change the uh, endpoint to output, right? It is saying data is undefined. Why? Because okay, what? Fine. Here in output I have used data. Okay, I am trying to use data. Okay, and if I, I mean, if I remove this completely, if I don't deal with that data anywhere. Then I'll have uh, uh, what we say. I'll have it rendered as it is. Fine. So, so I without the data, actually, it will render. Actually, now it, this particular thing helps me to identify what's happening with my code. Huh. Uh, my code is not working even with line number twenty-four. So I, I'll have to figure it out, and I will mail it to you. That's what I wanted to understand where I am going wrong. I will write it to you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so this request dot args part is the is the way of handling data when the data goes with the URL. Okay, so see here, what did I use to uh, uh, get the data? I use request dot form. Okay, request dot form when the data is sent to me through form in the request body. Okay. But when the data is available in the URL, I use request dot args. Okay, so when I write simply request dot args, uh, sorry, this data equals to request dot args, and simply stop it here. What will happen? This data will be a list of key value. Okay, that I have uh, in the URL. Okay, and when I use a redirect, it hits then endpoint, and whatever data I'm putting in a redirect goes as a part of URL. So that is how it is treated. I'm I know I'm confusing here, but don't uh, really worry about that part. We'll study redirect and args part in detail later. Okay, I will and I'll add a working part of code, the redirect part, when I give that uh, the source code for today's session. Okay. Yeah. So, is there any other doubt? Is there any doubt regarding the other part of the uh, of the session? Hello, sir. Yes. Sir, when I am submitting the information, it is showing page is not working. Page is not working. Uh, I mean, what yes, is the sir. exact error? Page not found. This... Is it? No, sir. It, it is written this page isn't working. Where are you using it? In VS Code. VS Code is it? Okay. Can yes, you share sir. your screen? Yes, sir. Oh, 
Oh, see, the thing is, your port is wrong. Just change this 5500 to 5300. Just write local host, yeah, colon 5000. So now it is working, but the template is not there. So can you go to the code? So you have output.html and a form. So can you open the form? Sir, earlier it was not working. So I bring out the uh, app uh, no 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 form uh, yeah, yeah yeah it is there but not found because it is not in the template you put both in the templates both output and form yes every html file that you create has to be put in templates yes are they going no sir. yeah cut and paste cut and paste Hmm. Now you try. The debug is true, right? Save it and try. Just reload it uh, in the browser. In the browser. In the save is okay. You go in the browser. Reload it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Hmm. Okay. The redirect working part I'll uh, share in the code. Okay, and then I'll explain it later when we go with the sessions of uh, week five. Okay, sir. I have one doubt. Can I share? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Just I'm getting this error, type error something. But redirect got an unexpected. Uh, so, I mean, in the redirect, are you using uh, uh, output and then data? Yeah, so, I mean, this is, okay, where is that exactly it is? Uh, in the app.py. Hmm. Uh, this return redirect. Yeah, this, uh, you uh, don't use this uh, because, see, in the redirect, we can only put in uh, either the output.html or URL for. You cannot just, in the render template, we can do that. In the redirect, we cannot, it does not have any other argument to pass on. It, we can only pass one argument. So we have to use a URL for? Huh. You can use URL for, but then, I mean, you have not dealt with uh, the data using args, no? So that won't work actually. You directly use a, re a render template. Don't worry about the redirect part for now. Just as you have used in output, no? You just use render template. Yeah, that this should work. Render underscore. Render underscore template and then mm -hmm. output.html and data equals yeah. data. Yeah. It will work. This will work. Yeah, you can try. Showing oh, your route spelling is wrong in app dot route in both probably line number twenty eight R O U T E. Oh, sorry. Also check in the main one. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. What about the function name in line twenty nine? Does it have to match with? Uh... 28 like output no 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 it does not have to doesn't have to okay. okay 
working. So every data, if you don't put, it won't uh, print anything. Yeah, it's working. Thanks. Sir, um, hmm. uh, for the la uh, for the lab assignment of week four, my like my code is working correctly and uh, like I have tested it. But you know, like when I'm when I'm submitting, I mean my assignment. So in the in the uh, like public cases, it's showing like the test three is failed. Uh, can you just tell me like why is it failed? It says test case to audit whether. Do you want me to like send you the description of it? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Just copy paste that test case and, uh, and yeah, yeah. paste it in the chat. Yeah, uh, I pasted it. Test case to audit whether endpoint uh, with course ID and ID value are responding with 200 OK. Okay, so uh, you just check uh, the the form. Okay, I mean there is this uh, template of course ID. So the ID is it correctly written? The same ID okay, is there. So ID should match the one uh, with it's given there. in the exactly data? It should match. Yes. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, I will look into it. Okay, fine. You check, uh, Avril. If it is there, is still the issue persists, you can mail the submission. Yeah, sure. Because otherwise, the like the application is working fine. Hmm, fine. Okay. Okay. Is there anything else, or shall we close the session? Everything is uh, okay. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for the session. Thank you very much. Thank yeah you. okay yeah about the portal issue just uh, i'll uh, i'll try to convey I mean, let's see what what is there okay i'll share the files and i hope the, this is clear you can uh, with with this you can you know work on your lab assignment okay guys fine uh, let's close this session now have a good night sir. yeah good night thanks everyone thanks for joining thank you